Hello, Booktube. Uh, this is Weekly Reads. Um, sorry about the rambling at the end of um, my book haul. I do tend to start to ramble when I really should be trying to wrap things up quickly, but sorry. Anyway, so I've had a very roller coaster reading week this week. Um, I started with the highest of highs, went to the lowest of lows. Uh, recovered and sort of maybe a downer I don't know so let's get into the books so the highest of highs this week and has has generally been my experience through most of these years is the best book I've read has been nonfiction and that the current book is um, Insurgent Empire by Priyambada Gopal um, I talked about this book some at the end of uh, my last weekly reads. I was I had read it over the course of last week and finished it off on uh, Sunday. And oh, this book is fantastic! Just absolutely wonderful. To recap, it is about the radicalization of anti-colonial dissent uh, amongst Britons after um, engagement with um, anti-colonial insurgency in the colonies, starting off with the mutiny of 1857 and continuing into uh, Morant Bay in the 1860s, Urabi's rebellion in the 1880s, uh, back to India in the early 20th century, and then into the West Indies and Finally, uh, Africa and the Mau Mau Rebellion in the 1950s. And basically it looks at how the insurgencies affected and influenced and radicalized um, British descent. And it is just amazing. Amazing. And I think it, in a way, sort of, this book itself can enact what, I mean, it argues in that by reading it, I mean, I pretty much, I have a, I mean, my opinion of the British Empire was pretty shitty before, but now it's pretty much whatever humanitarian reasons, arguments the British Empire had is like just a thin veneer for really just exploiting the rest of the world as much as it could and this book is just amazing and it also got me thinking about two subjects one is how narratives like how certain narratives become hegemonic and how others become dissident and another is while marxism is a crap economic theory um, but Marxism's greater value as a sort of a liberationist ideology and also a critical interpretive lens I thought is really fascinating <sighs> kind of makes me wish I had gotten my PhD and was a scholar oh well but just I definitely I love this book definitely I'm looking forward to anything else um, Priyamvada Gopal does in the future and also looking into her previous work definitely but amazing so from the highest of highs we now go to the lowest of lows I have two bells the first bell The Lesser Bohemians by Imer McBride um, I was looking forward to reading this book um, Steve Donahue rated it highly in the um, favorite fiction tag and I was looking forward to I'd already wanted to read it for my um, around the world in 80 books project and then I read it and I built within about 30 pages um, the narrative is told the story is told in this sort of stream of consciousness first person with 
the language being quite fractured. So, um, and while that fracturing has a certain poetic appeal to it, I mean, it's sort of what I like about um, modern or contemporary poetry, um, even though I do not understand poetry all that often, and I'll talk about that towards the end, but there's also a bit of that fracture almost leads to the perception, the implication of psychosis. And I don't know necessarily if that's what Imer McBride is intending or if it's just really, really difficult to capture a, a human consciousness with, without making it look psychotic. I don't know. But anyway, so I wanted to read the first paragraph. Um, I move, cars move, stock events light, city opening itself behind. Here's to be for its life is the bite and would be start of mine. Oh, yeah. Um, now, while I did bail, I'm going to come back to this. I definitely do see myself coming back to this and having another go at it in a few months. Definitely probably sometime next year. And there might be a uh, reading project around that, maybe. Although, the way things are going, I really should re-question whether or not I do any sort of reading challenges or reading projects. They don't turn out very well for me, I found. Okay. So, now it's the lowest of lows. The House on the Cerulean Sea, which I build within about 10 pages. Uh, so this is the story of, let me catch his name, Linus, who is basically an inspector for a sort of um, child protective services entity that deals with magical children. He goes to um, orphanages that house and takes care of, of magical children and makes sure they're doing everything by the book. Um, eventually he is sent to this one specific um, orphanage where I'm assuming he falls in love with the headmaster and sort of starts a found family with the children under his love interest care. The problem with this book is, is this book, it's an adult fantasy. The writing level is juvenile. It is absolutely juvenile. It is just... And I managed to get to the point where Linus is in the office. He is doing his job. He's approached by his supervisor. And they're described in very sort of middle gradey terms. And he is told he is to report to extremely upper management. I read that. I basically closed the book, held it, had this, like I had eaten a lemon and I contemplated throwing this book at the refrigerator. I was just, I was incensed, absolutely incensed. I, after that I could not read for the rest of Tuesday. So. Oh, I'm still incredibly enraged about that. And, I mean, part of it is, is I mean, it was, for me, a bad book. Um, but there's also, I have a craving, a yearning for science fiction and fantasy that features queer characters, more specifically uh, gay male characters in as the protagonist and it's 
I mean, so far from what I've read, it's... I'm not very happy with what I've read. I mean, now, of course, I can hear from the peanut gallery, it's probably well then... Write what... I mean, yeah, it's like, okay, what do you want to read? Now, write it. And I'm like, yes, but I want it now, and if I write it, it's going to take me... Yeah, anyway... That might be a rant for another time. And if you would like me to rant about that, leave a comment and maybe we'll try to do one on Monday or Wednesday, because obviously it would have some writing component to it. So I might have a rant on Wednesday because yeah, NaNoWriMo's kind of going to get changed. And I might talk about that at the end of the um, video. So, after the house in the Cerulean Sea, I was despondent. I was upset. Um, and I also hadn't planned on anything else to read. Because I'd hoped I would be one of them through the whole of the week, work week. But that didn't happen. So then on Wednesday, I decided to uh, read some more of uh, Lock and Key by Joe Hill. And with art by Gabriel Rodriguez and um, Farm Sling for Crown of Shadows and Keys to the Kingdom. And I like both. I mean, they're really good. Um, quite enjoyed them. There's a bit of Daddy Steve coming in with some of the characterization that I think could have been avoided. Um, but on the whole, I really like them. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series through Kindle Unlimited because while the fifth volume is available, the sixth volume is not. <clears throat> I'll have to pay for it, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about that. And then on Thursday, I read um, volume four of Fairy Tale by Hiro Mishima. So in volume four, this is directly after the terrorist attack on um, Oshibana, I think. I think that's it. I don't remember. Um, on the Guildmasters meeting. And so basically, while Isenbold's attack was defeated, the demon was destroyed, there was a lot of destruction. The guild regional headquarters was destroyed, um, a bridge was destroyed, the train station was destroyed. There was a lot of destruction, which if you read Fairy Tale, it's massive amounts of property damage is to be expected. So Urza is arrested and basically uh, put up for a show trial in which she'd be read the riot act and then quietly let go, although Natsu kind of in his way ruined that. So, but most of the um, volume deals with um, Natsu going on an unauthorized S-Class mission. Um, an S-Class mission is one in which is uh, missions reserved only for the elite of the guild, the most skilled. Um, Erisa is one of them. Others would be Mystigan, who's a mystery person. Um, Laxes, who's uh, Makarov's grandson, and also eventually um, Gildart, who isn't um, introduced until well into the series. Um, so Natsu, Happy, um, Lucy go to this island. There, um, Gray tries to stop them, but he's kind of knocked out and dragged with them. So they go to this island, and they find out that the islanders have been turned into demons and that there's also a cult on the island who are trying to resurrect this demon that um, Gray has history with and it's revealed that um, the leader of this cult is and some other wizards is Gray's um, a former uh, a fellow student of Gray's. They learn from the same teacher and they have history and 
So it turns into a fight with um, the ex fellow student and his, uh, Leon and his quirky mini boss squad. Um, of course, uh, this particular arc isn't one of my favorites. Um, it doesn't really show Urza eventually when she makes her active role um, in a very good light. And it's also a bit of a problem because Leon and the other, his pretty much his allies uh, reappear in a, a few arcs down the road as allies of fairy tale. It's kind of a bit of like an early installment we earned this aspect to it. But anyway, but I enjoyed it. So anyway, so that was Thursday's reading. I can pretty much get um, a comic book or a manga volume read in about an hour or so. So anyway, so then today I decided to go ahead and read uh, The Dream of the Unified Field by Jory Graham. Um, I hauled it obviously a few hours ago and I've had it for a few weeks, but I tend to hold the books until the end of the month so I can pretty much do a large haul. Um, I quite, in, I mean, I've had this book before and I enjoy, I've enjoyed reading it and I, on this reread, I quite enjoyed it too. Although I'm not entirely sure thinking about it now. Whether or not I actually, well, I do enjoy reading modern and contemporary poetry, I'm not entirely sure I easily understand it. Which may or may not be a contradiction, but you know, I quite like I mean, I liked it, but I'm also a bit mystified by that enjoyment. So, what am I going to be reading tomorrow? I think I'm going to continue with the poetry and start on SOS Poems 1961 to 2013 by Amiria Baraka. I've been meaning to get to this book for a while and it's real past time I do. I'm also planning on uh, reading Crooked Little Heart by Anne Lamott, which again I hauled um, earlier today. Uh, some of the com uh, I think one of the comments I got for that video mentioned that she liked um, or she loves Anne Lamott, so I'm gonna go and read this. Um, I'm also maybe if I have time or yeah, bailing, which I hope no bells, but um, I'm also gonna have um. The Dark Mirror by uh, Juliet Marillier on the docket. And Black Leviathan by Burned Pur Purplees, I think, or Purplus? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that last name. I think it's Purplies. Um, which I've been meaning to get to for ages, so hopefully I will enjoy all of these. Anyway, booktube, that's been my weekly reads. Um, I'll see you hopefully Monday with a video, although I say, and I never do, because um, I usually want like Mondays to be some kind of discussion video or something, and I just, I try to film something and I'm not entirely happy with it because it takes me a while to really get into a subject particularly if I'm not being if I'm not having a script when I don't script these videos so it does take me a while to get into a subject but it takes a lot of fits and starts and there's only a limited amount of time that I can I want to film because um, I usually film about 12:30. so if I'm kind of creeping towards one I'm going to say, okay, I'm just, I'm bailing on this video, which, I mean, because I do want to do more discussion videos, but um, it's also incredibly difficult for me to get into uh, and get comfortable talking about the um, subject or whatever I want to talk about. So if I don't see you on Monday, I will definitely 
uh, be doing a tag on Tuesday, maybe even an original tag, because there is the detective tag I really have got to work on and do. And I've been meaning to do that for months now. Sorry about not doing that, but I've been meaning to do Anyway, so I'll definitely see you on Tuesday, BookTube. Um, until then, thank you. Have a great um, weekend, and please stay safe.